Welcome to another video at the Churchfront channel of our trips to see our Accelerator Pro students who are in the Accelerator program. We came out to Yakult Community Church out in Yakult, Washington, and we're excited to spend a couple days with them. So we wanted to hit the list of really assessing every single piece of tech that they had in their worship space and assessing their team as well. And so uh, I came out for three days and was able to spend time just going down the checklist of things that we had talked about, goals that these students had had, and uh, have had great help from Noah and James on this trip. And we've really been tackling every aspect of their ministry um, with full force. So excited to dive into what we've been able to accomplish here today. Let's start with audio. Here at Yakult Community Church, we are running the Waves LV1 system, the 64 channel configuration. We We've got some front of house IO with the DS Pro 1000 running a talkback mic and media playback, also sending an output into our recording through ProPresenter. And so we're running the LV1 system on a Mac Studio, and we've got the two touch screens here for optimal control of your faders with the fit and kind of the hands-on tactile feedback of the touch screen when you're editing plugins, as well as some easily accessible hotkeys on the Elgato Stream Deck to trigger your Waves Real Tune keys in a moment's notice. So I wanted to kind of dive into their audio setup here and I'll make sure to show you guys kind of their sources that they're dealing with. But one of the things that we talked about coming in is really trying to get good source tone from their band. Now their band it consists of a lot of great signals including a Nord keyboard, a Taylor acoustic guitar, an electronic Roland V drum kit, and an electric guitar as well as a Helix setup. And it all sounds really good coming from stage. So one of the things that we spent time doing is really simplifying their layout. So this was their lead vocalist uh, channel with some uh, EQ happening here at the top. We've got the vocal rider, Waves Real Tune, Sibilance, a compressor, some Arvox, and then a dynamic EQ with F6, as well as the Greg Wells plugin. And we kind of took a moment to uh, go back to the basics and really gain stage things correctly at the source. So we had every instrumentalist play during a rehearsal. We were able to see their meters coming in, and then we turned off the rack on each channel so that we were hearing no plugins. We were really starting from scratch. So I'll go ahead and show you our updated show file. So after we spent some time updating the channel processing, we really were able to simplify some of the processing plugins that we were using. And ultimately, again, because they have such good source tone at the stage coming from their instruments, they are able to really simplify the amount of processing happening on each channel. So their vocal chain processing went down quite a bit from eight plugins to around five, sometimes six plugins, just depending on what channel it is. And the same goes for most of their other channels. We are using electronic kit, and so a lot of work didn't really need to be done at the waves level. We were able to just kind of compress it, EQ it a little bit, make it sound good in the room. And so you'll see a lot of simplicity across the board there. So we've got our vocal channels over here. We've got guitars and bass keys. Our electric kit has four outputs, so we've kind of summed everything to kick, snare, toms, and cymbals. We've got our video playback, handheld, and then we've got our pastor mic. We also have our tracks coming in, and so we've routed all of our channels as we always do from channels to groups and then groups to matrices. So this is where we spend a little bit more time on the group side of things, is putting in a little bit of processing on the group side of things with some dynamic EQ, some side chain compression to make sure things sit in the mix well for not only the room, but also the recording and the broadcast feeds going to the TVs throughout the building. And yeah, we were just able to spend some time really simplifying the plugin chains that they had going on. So the key to this audio setup was simplify. It was really trying to get back to what does the source sound like? And in this situation, the sources were excellent from the start. And then really just trying to fine tune that source to sound good in the mix, to be in a balanced mix with the rest of the band so that nothing was uh, getting swallowed up and nothing was standing out um, in a way that is distracting. So a lot of what we did was just trim down what they had in their signal chain 
and it made it pretty clean in this room and really easy to hear all of the clarity of the different instruments in the mix. And it made it easier to kind of uh, get a feel for loudness in this room as well. Once we got to a good place with the mix, then we can adjust the mix appropriately to fit the loudness preferences of the room. And here at Yakult Community Church, they are using the Shure QLXD4 system for their wireless handheld mics, and they're using PSM 300s for their in-ear packs. And so we were able to set up a wireless workbench on this extra computer back here in the tech booth to show all of their battery levels and RF signals. So when the mics are on and people are using them during service, they can, from their tech booth, keep an eye on and monitor battery health and signal strength so they don't have to walk all the way up to where the racks are on stage to gauge what the battery health and level is like on any of their transmitters. So that was an easy software deployment and I think it will really help them have uh, peace of mind during a service and clarity about who is coming through where and how strong or weak a signal might be and if any adjustments need to be made for that microphone. So here we're using Waves Tracks Live as our virtual sound check and playback tool to play back audio into the LV-1 system. So we were able to capture the recording from a rehearsal with their team, and then we can play it back over the Wave SoundGrid network all off of this Mac Studio, which yes, I know you'll light it up in the comments, but Apple Silicon has some issues with Wave Sound Grid and media playback, but for our purposes being just recording and playing back not in a live environment, we're not using this on Sunday services to play back media from ProPresenter or something like that. We're just using it for virtual sound check purposes. It seems to be working okay. And so we were able to just to connect an ethernet cable to the Mac Studio, wired into the Sound Grid network switch, and we can see all the 32 channels of inputs coming into the LV-1 system and play it back so that we can fine tune the sound in this room. One of the themes to this trip was simplification, making it easy for volunteers to get involved, making it not cumbersome for the setup and planning of the weekend services. So prior to us working together on this project, we were recording into Wirecast on this computer and using ProPresenter slides and themes and looks to get a broadcast look. We would record into Wirecast, put it into iMovie, and then export from iMovie in a codec that could upload to YouTube. So one of the things we did to simplify this was move the recording into ProPresenter. We're not live streaming from ProPresenter, but we're still sending a feed from the board from the DS Pro 1000 into ProPresenter for high quality broadcast audio experience. And then we're recording it right into ProPresenter onto the hard drive, and then they can upload it to their platforms later as they choose, or they can send it to their teams who are abroad, which is a high value for their church. So we came into ProPresenter to really try to optimize the experience of running ProPresenter and using ProPresenter for not only slides during the morning services, but also the recording experience. So one of the things that we did as a part of trying to simplify and streamline the system here at ProPresenter for recording and for using it in the room is utilizing macros, which we love macros here at Churchfront and we think macros are one of the most underutilized tools in ProPresenter. So we took some macros and planned uh, some start and stop capture settings. So now after the five minute countdown, they'll move to their bumper and it will automatically start recording in ProPresenter. So nobody has to worry about remembering to start recording or to stop recording because as long as that first slide gets triggered, the whole service from that point forward will be recorded. So we plan some macros for that. We also started to automate their lights with ProPresenter using macros. So we did a pretty simple song one, two, three, and four, and then a nice stage wash for announcements and sermon time that we are able now to drag and drop onto the weekend elements. So instead of spending lots of time programming between two apps, and instead of really kind of having to get into the weeds each and every week, all we need to do is drag and drop the correct macro onto the song for the weekend services, and then it'll be triggered and automated in light keys so that 
uh, the operation experience is really still within ProPresenter. You can go to LightKey to make some small tweaks, but we have a pretty simple lighting setup here in this room, and so we just planned four songs and a stage wash, so it will get automatically triggered all from ProPresenter. This makes it a super easy experience for a volunteer to get up and running because the lyrics are automated, so we don't need somebody actually operating lyrics during the songs, and if you're automating lighting with those song macros, then they really don't have to be jumping back and forth to create unique dynamic looks for their lighting setup in this church. Now it all happens through ProPresenter. So we're recording the service through ProPresenter, we're automating lyrics through ProPresenter and playback, we're automating lighting with LightKey and ProPresenter. So the main hub for everything at this position is ProPresenter. We are recording through ProPresenter, we're automating lyrics with playback and ProPresenter. We're automating lighting with ProPresenter and light key. And we have this nice operator view for them to see a nice glance at the main projector view, the broadcast recording, and the stage display all in one spot. So they're not having to use a bunch of different locations to get a good feel for operations on a Sunday morning. We've even integrated the Stream Deck here to open up and launch the light key application as well as the file that they use on Sunday morning and we've put a button to launch ProPresenter. So uh, this is really going to be the hub for their volunteer control center. One of the things that we deployed was smart plugs to help automate the startup process easily and so we the team used to have to go to a breaker and then turn on individual outlets and panels and surge protectors. Now the sequence is turning on the breaker and then we can come back and use Apple HomeKit and Siri shortcuts to turn on and off multiple smart plugs at a time. We made sure to program the Stream Deck buttons to leverage these shortcuts so we have an all on process and an all off process that will power all those plugs on and off during the morning setup time. So this is really the control center for the volunteers back here, running ProPresenter, leveraging the Stream Deck, and you know, basically being able to deploy all those different environments of lyrics, lighting, broadcast, and power and startup right from this position. So I'd love for you to leave in the comments if you have any ideas further for how to optimize and improve this setup back here to make it more simplified and streamlined for volunteers to use on a Sunday morning. Thank you.